began in the 1960s as a bunch of Bay Area kids experimenting with music and ways of life. By the 1990s, they had become a legend worldwide. As a band called the Grateful Dead, Dennis McNally is their publicist. The Grateful Dead is about a journey, a trip, a journey together, and the band and, and the crew and the staff and, uh, you know, and the audience were all in it together. The long journey of the Grateful Dead and its extended family of deadheads came to an end in 1995 with the passing of lead guitarist and singer Jerry Garcia. But the road they traveled together can still be followed and seen by all of us in the Bay Area. It's a road that passes through a renowned dance hall and a free-spirited neighborhood in San Francisco made famous around the globe. But the road also leads to a lesser-known landmark in Marin County, where the band's roots run deep. I mean, right over here, what is one of my most amazing musical experience of my whole life. At a place called Olimpali, near the city of Novato, former drummer for the Grateful Dead, Mickey Hart, remembers his youth and the early days of the band. He went over and woke Janice up and said, Janice, you be our vocalist. And she goes, be Janice Joplin. Yeah, Janice. And she said, oh, you're crazy. Today is the first time in 25 years that Mickey has returned to Olympali. You remember this place, huh? Oh, yeah, like the back of my hand. I mean, uh, it was a lot of memorable moments here. These days, Mickey continues to perform with his own group, Planet Drum. He's also an author and studies the indigenous music of native peoples around the world. But in the 1960s, he came to Olympali to discover himself and new styles of music. The masterpiece was collectively made with the, the vibes of the audience and the vibe of the band and everything around. That was a special thing. It was a great masterpiece. A masterpiece made in part at Olympali, which is now a state historic park. But in the late 1960s, it was a 650-acre ranch rented by the Grateful Dead and other groups for all-day parties and concerts. It was like a resort kind of a hippie resort kind of thing, you know, with horses and, um, you know, strange things going on. This hippie resort included a 26-room mansion, an Olympic-sized swimming pool, and a garden filled with exotic plants, all constructed originally by the wealthy Burdell family, beginning in the 1800s. There were stables and horses here, too. I rode these hills, every inch of these hills with my horse, and um, this was a place where we can be close to nature. And people can still enjoy this open space on horseback and by foot yeah. on five miles of hiking trails through oak woodlands to the summit of Mount Burdell. The history of Olimpali is interpreted by state park rangers and volunteers. It's a terrific thing you're doing here. A history that includes the native Miwok people who lived here for thousands of years. Olimpali is also the only state park in the nation that interprets the 60s counterculture, the early world surrounding the Grateful Dead. This was our own world, you know, for a long time, maybe three or four years. Uh, I mean, the band only was here for six weeks, but uh, uh, we came from time to time. And every time members of the Grateful Dead came, they celebrated the freedom they experienced at Olimpali in their performances. We played here quite a bit. They just would take off here. You'd start here, you'd just, and then and music would just start popping out. Oh, it was just, just a, we played for five, six, seven hours without stopping. It was just a flow of consciousness. It was no songs, no one sang. Perhaps no one sang, but almost everyone danced and enjoyed a carefree life. This was the archetype, this was the mother of commune. I mean, there was Hell's Angels, Diggers, old folks, uh, priests, nuns, uh, young folks, blacks, whites, you name it. And we all sort of got together and coexisted quite nicely. A commune of a hundred people called the Chosen Family formed here in 1967, living off the land and loving the music of Grateful Dead concerts. The backstage passes came later. <laughs> when she was 17 years old, Noelle Barton joined the commune and later even changed her last name to Olimpali. It was like the party that you went to with all your best friends, but now you didn't have to go home and you didn't have to go to work. 
and you didn't have to go anywhere else because all your friends were living with you. The commune was a haven for people in search of new identities and values. We had a lot of laughter. We had a lot of, you know, tender moments, a lot of growing up together. We went through a lot of the same changes together. And this was all a point in our life where everybody was really free. Although the Chosen family disbanded after a devastating fire on the ranch in 1969, reminders of its lifestyle can still be seen on the walls and the floors of Olampali, not far from recreations of another communal way of life, led here for scores of centuries by native Miwoks. We were, we were continuing some kind of a spiritual quest that was obviously you know, part of this land. It just was a feeling, it was sort of like, your heart sort of, you know, pumped a little faster when you were here. So you felt empowered by being on this land, and obviously these people did as well. Mickey says the land at Olimpali taught him important lessons, lessons that have guided his attitudes and his actions ever since. The world is only as good as the things in it. And um, you try to put good things into the world, whether it be love, the way, under, you know, compassion, you know, preservation of the land, you know, access to that land. All of these things are really important for a good world and a good life. For decades, Mickey and the Grateful Dead expressed these beliefs and their dreams for a better world in their music. You can't blame anybody for trying to make it better, and I think we did make it better in many ways, and we took what we learned in places like this and brought it to the world. Olumpali is still teaching lessons the rest of us can learn every day about nature and many chapters of the human experience. So of all the things that Olumpali could have been in the end, being a state park's not bad. It's the best thing it could have been.